Hello everyone and welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. You're watching JCTV on the Xbox One console. This is the Sheamus Outback John Deere Farm, episode number 14. Thanks for tuning in folks. We've got some excitement planned for you today. It's actually already been purchased, but I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet. We're going to take a little tour around the farm here. We've been pretty busy. We've, uh, let's see, what did we do? We replanted, we reharvested all of our fields again, and we had a ton of money, so we went and bought something huge, and it's a surprise. We'll look at it a little later in the episode, but right now let's go check out how our silage is doing. We also had some time to cut some more grass and put some more silage into the bunker. You'll see here that we added some more rows. We've got a few hundred thousand more. We are looking at 421,000 liters of grass so far, or chaff, as it turns into once you place it in the silage bunker. So we've got lots and lots of chaff, and we're just going to keep going because it's not full yet. And they didn't put the six large silage bunkers here for nothing. So we're going to fill one of them up. I don't think we have enough time to fill all six of them, but we're just going to fill it all up. All right, let's head on over to the sheep pen here. Uh, we'll check and see how the sheep doing and how the sheep feeder 6,000 is running. Is it the sheep feeder 6,000 or sheep feeder 3,000? I can't remember. Either way, it's the automatic sheep feeder set up with conveyor belts. Let's have a look here real quick. The sheep are maintaining 20,000 liters of grass. Uh, the water is, well, of course, they're maintaining it. We haven't really done anything with them yet. But uh, we've got some wool growing there or growing. We've got some wool spawning over there, so yeah, they are uh, hard at work producing wool. We've got one full pallet with one bale in that second pallet there. And there's not very much mess to clean up, uh, if none at all. So what we can do is jump out of this John Deere tractor and into the smaller John Deere tractor, and we can load that pallet of wool onto the trailer as the inaugural pallet of wool from our sheep pen. This is the first one of its kind many more to come i'm getting way too excited about one pallet of wool in uh, the grand scheme of things it's probably about two thousand dollars but uh, let's go and put this onto the trailer but before we do that we need pallet forks oh the pallet forks we bought are over at the shop i have not gone to get them yet so let's head on up to the shop and that will inadvertently expose the surprise that i had planned for later on oh well We'll just tell you what it is now while we're on our way to the shop. Why don't you click that subscribe button for me in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Drop a like on the video ladies and gentlemen and ring that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we upload new content. You don't want to miss anything. Then come and follow us on all of our social media campaigns. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, Patreon. There's a PayPal link there. If you feel so inclined to send a donation my way that would be fantastically appreciated. Donations are never expected folks but you will earn a special place in my heart for years to come. And there's also a new link there from Sprizzy.com if you're looking to grow and expose your own YouTube channel and get larger than life. Check out Sprizzy.com for all your YouTube needs. They can certainly help you out. Then head on over to the featured channel section of my YouTube channel. You'll see five excellent farming simulator YouTubers there. Go and check them out. Drop likes on their videos. Subscribe to their channels. Ring their notification bells. All that fun stuff. And you won't be disappointed with anything coming out of those five channels there. So if you look directly ahead, you will see the surprise coming into focus. It is a big honking green machine. What is it? Let's get in there. It kind of looks like a big John Deere cotton harvester. That's right, folks. We had enough money to purchase the John Deere cotton harvester. And we're going to be starting up a cotton business. Let's have a look at this bad boy. This thing is huge. It is monstrous. It is ginormous to say the least. It is a fantastic piece of machinery. And we're going to start making some round cotton bales. We've already got the uh, John Deere our tractor and the cedar already set up to plant some cotton. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. But for now, we've got to drive around the back of this beast, get the pallet forks, and try and put that pallet of wool onto the wool trailer that we purchased that's just sitting over by the sheep pen there all right we got the forks let's get the fork out of here <laughs> all right 
that wasn't very funny let's head on back to the farm folks and we'll load up this pallet of wool all right we're back at the farm we've got our pallet forks attached and we're ready to attempt this ginormous feat placing the wool pallet onto the wool trailer you almost have to be a neurological surgeon to get this done properly all right oh, oh, oh it's shaking no please don't oh where'd it go that sucked where'd it go that pallet of wool just jumped off my forks hit the other pallet of wool and sent it flying so now we've got to put this other pallet of wool back in the square before another one spawns otherwise we'll have a half empty pallet of wool that should be good a little bit more there we go that should be good there and then the wool will keep going into that pallet then it'll spawn another one after that one's full all right let's try this one more time to get this pallet of wool onto the trailer that was the weirdest thing uh, that has not happened to me since the uh, Shima Sovo series where my wool pallet jumped off the forks and landed inside the chicken pen. Uh, that was pretty hilarious. If you missed that, uh, go back and check out the uh, Shima Sovo series and you'll see that. Oh, it's shaking again. What's going on? Why is it doing this? Stay. You just stay right there. Oh. Jeez. All right. This is a little unnerving. Let's try this one more time. Let's see if we can get this done. Maybe it's because I'm driving too fast. Maybe the vibrations from the tractor are shaking the wool pallet right off the forks. Maybe we should try and slow it down just a little bit. Or maybe we should just go get a crane and lift it on there without the pallet forks. They make cranes? We could probably use uh, one of the logging trucks. If we can get a logging truck, maybe we can pick up the pallets of wool with the uh, the grapple. I think maybe now we'll just go a little bit slower and drive safely. Let's see if we can fit this onto the trailer without any problems. Um, my money's going on jumping off the forks and over the wall and into the field. Oh, seems to be okay. Nice and stable. Yeah, maybe I was just driving too fast. Alright, mental note. Cannot drive that fast with a thousand pounds of wool on your forks all right down we go nice and gentle you stay there there we go done let's just push it a little bit to the end as I'm OCD but where the pallets are there we go perfect one down 37 more to go or thereabouts I don't know how many that trailer holds but we're gonna find out because we're not gonna sell the wool until the trailer is full Let's just put the forks right here and we'll go back and hook up the universal bucket and then we'll see just what's on tap next. Let's go on to the other side. That's where we left the John Deere tractor. We'll put the sheep tractor back over here as well. I'm really happy that that sheep feeder is still working and the grass is uh, still piled up there. That's good. All right, so there's a little piece of grass on the ground there. Why don't we get that first? I think uh, the next step is maybe rig up a sheep grass picker upper 3000. The sheep cleaner 3000, maybe, we, maybe we'll tackle that. Um, we need about uh, four more conveyor belts, so we'll see. Uh, let's hop in here and you know what let's go check out the cedar because we have the cedar all ready to go at the beginning of the field where we were planting our corn we've now entered phase four um, we put phase three on hold a little bit which was the corn or no phase three was the I'm so confused phase three was the grass phase two was the soybean fields and phase one was the corn that's right all right yeah so the cedars over here on this side Let's go and check this out. So phase four is sort of migrating into phase one with the corn. And we're just going to find somewhere else to plant the corn. And we're going to start the cotton off here. And we'll see how many bales we get. And if we can get more bales somewhere else, then we'll definitely look at a larger cotton field and we'll move the corn back here. But for the time being, we're going to stop with the corn and we're just going to go with cotton and soybeans 
And there we go. He is off to the races. And we're just going to jump out of the tractor real quick here and run back to our other tractor. And we'll let this guy seed. There we go. Run out of the way real quick so we don't get run over by the sower. All right, let's run back to this guy. And then we've got to... Oh, so we're planting cotton. We've got the cotton harvester. We need a cotton bale trailer as well. So let's head on back to the farm. We'll park this tractor real quick, jump into the shop, see what they have for bale trailer options, and hopefully we can get one that we can paint John Deere green because John Deere, despite making a cotton harvester, does not make a bale trailer for cotton bales. Modders, if you're listening, John Deere needs a cotton bale collector slash trailer slash you know what to do. Let's get it done. All right, let's get into the shop here real quick. What do we got? What do we got? We got these big fancy red trailers, this uh, little Flegel one here. I think this one will do just fine with four bales. Can we paint this one? Let's see. Do, do, do we can? All right, where's John Deere Green? There's no John Deere. Not Fent Green, but John Deere Green. There we go. The bed is now John Deere green. Let's change the arms to John Deere green as well. And I think uh, we can't change the color of the rims, so that's okay. And there we go. Communal narrow tires, work tires. It doesn't really matter. Standard tires are fine. We don't need the expansion. That just adds the little thing to the side of it. The auto load, heck yes, because we're not going to be picking up these bales manually. Uh, decals, red, black, does it really matter? I don't think so. Alright, so we've purchased the bale trailer. Now we just have to head on up to the shop and pick it up because it's parked right beside our John Deere cotton harvester. So let's head on up to the shop, grab the bale trailer, and then we'll bring it back and we'll park it right beside the straw bale trailer. And then we'll have a little family of bale trailers. Alright, check back with you in just a little bit. And here we are arriving at the shop. Wow, they sandwiched that trailer in between the fence and the harvester. Really good. All right, let's try and not damage that John Deere harvester. It's brand new. And we haven't even driven it yet. I think the one harvester will be fine for now. That cotton field is not very big. But if we do migrate to a larger cotton field, a second cotton harvester may or may not be in the works, depending on the amount of cotton that we actually have. Look at that. Fantastic looking bale trailer. Just a sea of green. Alright, let's get this back to the shop. Our auto-loading cotton bale trailer. Uh, the John Deere cotton harvester produces round bales, so I did remember to buy the round bale trailer instead of the square bale one. So, uh, disaster averted because I've done that a hundred times before. Bought the wrong bale trailer to find out that I had to sell it and bring it back. All right, let's get this back to the farm, and then we'll see what's next. Oh, yes, I know. Once we get the cotton bale trailer back to the farm, we can actually drive the cotton harvester back to the farm and get that set up as well. I cannot wait to drive that uh, Jotten, Jotten, the Jotten harvester, the John Deere cotton harvester at a blistering six miles an hour. All right, so we're going to put the cotton bale trailer right here beside the straw bale trailer trailer central right here growing by the day maybe we should move the wool trailer over here too well that seems a little far to drive with a pallet of wool and given my experience with pallets of wool I think it's best to keep it close to the sheep pen so that uh, the last thing we need is for it to fly off the forks get it hit by the train and then uh, who knows where my wool will go from there all right, where's the John Deere cotton harvester? There, the CP690, the cotton producer, 690, is that what CP stands for? Who knows? Look at this thing. Let's fold it up. We're folding up the harvester. It came unfolded. So we're going to fold it up, and it's nice and compact, and it should fit inside the shed, no problem, although it is rather high. Uh, a little bit taller than the old... Uh, John Deere harvester that we have all right let's get this back to the shop 16 miles an hour folks oh good no train came 
All right. I feel like we should be playing the Jeopardy theme song. While we wait. Well, let's unfold it again. Oh, we can unfold it while we drive. That thing is huge. All right, so that is unfolded mode. And then, so if you've never used the John Deere cotton harvester before, this is the way it works. So the cotton harvester itself will go through four stages. So it's going to go from 0 to 100%. And then it'll go to 25%, and then 0 to 100%, and then go to 50%, and then so on and so on to 75%, and then 100 And once you get that second level to 100%, you will actually get a 20,000 pound cotton bale fall right out of the back of the harvester there. You'll see it in action probably next episode once the cotton is ready to harvest. But it is pretty amazing. Uh, it's a great little piece of great little. It's a huge piece of machinery. You know what? I've never been in that cave before. I'm really distracted today. All right, we're gonna have to go and check out that cave at some point. Why is there a cave there? Hmm, I don't know. All right, let's get this. We're almost there, folks. It's almost over. This is a, the long family vacation drive back to the farm. Do you remember those? Long family vacations your parents used to make you go on. Nine, ten hours in the car with your brother and sister. Terrible. Terrible memories from my childhood. Hated them. Hated those car trips. I will never put my kids through that. All right, let's get back to the farm. We're almost there. There's the sheep pen. Right on the other side of that wool is the jumping pal jumping pallet of wool on the other side of the wool. On the other side of the wall... It's been a day, folks. It's been a very long day. We're almost there. Oh, and the bars are up because the train decided to stop right there. So now we have to back up. And the bars are down on the inside of the farm, so we have to go this way. Okay. Whose bright idea was it to stop the train so close to the tracks? All right, let's get in here. All right, I'm glad that this uh, harvester fits through there, no problem. The only problem is the shed. Will it fit in the shed? Who knows, but we're about to find out. I hope I did not spend almost $500,000 on a piece of equipment that will not fit into the shed. I think it'll fit. I think we can, uh, like, there's a big bay right there. I think maybe we can put it there. There's like a double wide bay right there beside the plow. There's nothing there, so maybe we can put it there. We'll have all the equipment on this side for farming and all the equipment on the other side for animals. I think that's uh, what we will do. And I have to write that down, the Sheep Cleaner 3000. We have to figure out how to rig that up. Um, I did it before on an older series where we had uh, the Sheep Cleaner with conveyor belts. We just had the uh, conveyor belts pick up the grass that the sheep spit on the ground and then conveyor belt it back to where the grass was feeding into. Um, it worked and it didn't work. It's kind of hard to explain. Maybe we'll tackle that next episode. We'll see what we can do with the uh, sheep cleaner conveyor belts. Or uh, there's actually another mod too that you can download. It's the, uh, I don't know if you've seen this or heard of this before. It's the Yaley Automatic Roomba mod it's like a Roomba that cleans up your animal droppings you just uh, create a path for it to drive and then it auto cleans your animals and then empties in a location that you specify so maybe we'll check that out too who knows um, another alternative is to put uh, wood chips down in your grass feeding area so that way if the grass doesn't hit the ground the game doesn't recognize that they're dirty but that's kind of cheating I'm guessing so we did that on the Shima Sovo series as well. We put uh, wood chips down in the grass feeding area of the cows and chickens so that we wouldn't have to clean up after them. But, as I've been told, that's cheating. That's not real life. All right, anyways, we're done with the cotton harvesting. There we go. All right. So now we just have to sit back and wait for the first stage of fertilization. And then we can uh, fertilize the cotton and get as much out of this as possible. I'm hoping for at least four bales of cotton. So that way we can fill up the trailer. But uh, what I plan to do is just stockpile the cotton bales. Till we have a humongous amount of cotton bales. And then we'll just sell them all at once. 
We'll just inundate the spinnery with bales of cotton all at once. We'll just throw them at them. All right, so let's uh, put the cedar back in here. And then we'll uh, pull out the fertilizer spreader. We'll fill this up and we'll get that into position and ready to uh, fertilize the field. Uh, what are we doing yet? We're going to bring this tractor back in here first because he was sitting out in the rain. It's still raining. It's been like raining the whole episode. That's okay. We're not harvesting or anything. We're just uh, planting and moving some equipment around. All right, so we'll use this tractor to pull out the fertilizer sprayer. And then we'll set this up at the beginning of the field and we'll get ready to fertilize our cotton. Once it has entered the first stage of growing. Well, actually, it's in the first stage now. We just planted it. Once it enters the second stage of growing, we will throw some fertilizer on it and create more cotton. All right, and I think that is going to wrap up this episode, folks. There's not too much else for us to do today except fill this fertilizer spreader and put it over there right ahead of us at the front of the field. So thanks for tuning in, folks. If you have not done so already, remember to hit that subscribe button for me before you leave. Drop a like on the video and ring that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we upload new content. You don't want to miss anything. There's a different episode each day of the week, folks. We're doing a different map Monday to Friday five days a week taking weekends off because we can do that all right thanks for tuning in everyone have a fantastic rest of your day for now this is jctv saying hey see you later